Hey friends, welcome to the Plaid X2 channel. My name is John. On this channel, we talk all things physical media, some movies, music, and books. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe down below for more of that kind of content. Well, this is episode number three of the five. I'm really excited. I am loving these so much. And this conversation is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. This one is with the Physical Media Man. Uh, if you have not checked out his channel before, all the links are down below for Instagram and YouTube. He's got an amazing channel with phenomenal content. He's a really great guy. And uh, anyway, I know if you've not checked out his channel, you'll love it. Um, but anyway, please do check him out. This is a really fun conversation. He pulled a bunch of stuff that I'd never heard of. And so uh, my journey, my, uh, my wish list, my to watch list, and every one of these episodes is growing longer and longer and longer. So anyway, thank you very much, Physical Media Man, for that. So friends, uh, this uh, if you've never uh, seen one of these episodes, the point of these episodes is uh, I ask a fellow movie collector, someone maybe in the YouTube movie collecting community, five questions. And they answer the five questions with five films. And so that's kind of what we do in this series. And each of the answers gives us a little more uh, insight into the collector and where they came from, movies that kind of got them started, uh, things that they're passionate about. And uh, so anyway, I'm enjoying these conversations very much. This is the third one. I'll have links down below to the other two I had with uh, Stephanie from Movie Chatter and Mr. Nichols. So check those out as well. But anyway, uh, I won't hesitate any longer. Friends, I hope you enjoy this conversation that I had with my friend, Physical Media Man. Any film that features his mustache is a great movie, so. <laughs> but great movie. I've never seen it. I have the biggest what? Yeah, I know, man. I'm a complete <laughs> failure. I just saw Jaws last week, so. Yeah, I know. saw that. <laughs> so a young physical media man would have been wearing a Davy Crockett costume at karate class. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Breaking boards and bricks. <laughs> So friends, if you're watching, we've got Physical Media Man here. And uh, thanks so much for doing this, man. I really do appreciate you doing this. I'm having fun doing these conversations. So um, you are on my list of people I definitely wanted to have one of these conversations with. So thanks so much for doing this. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. It's an honor. <laughs> well, you're a sports guy. I picked that. Oh, yeah. I watch tons of your videos. So I know you're a sports guy. And you are a Larry Bird fan. Oh, yeah. I almost wore uh, the Hick from French Lick shirt for the video, but I was like, well, I got to wear my physical media man shirt, so. Yeah, you got to represent the channel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, when I knew you were a Larry Bird fan, I was like, all right, this guy's got to be a decent fella if he likes Larry Bird. So I know you're Larry Bird via Pacers. Is that yeah, right? and, and in, I went to Indiana State where he went to school, too, so. Oh, okay. So that as well, plus just being from Indiana and him being from Indiana. Yeah. I always kind of liked him. And then my great aunt was a giant Larry Bird fan. So, Oh, really? Yeah. That is awesome. So, so yeah. I, I uh, have no connections to Indiana except for I did my grad work there. But I'm with Larry Bird via Boston. It's, okay. I'm a fan via Boston. So, but gotcha. you connect on that. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> cool, man. Well, then I have, since you're a sports fan, um, before I get to the five questions I have for you, okay. I have. I'll call it five pregame questions for you. All right. And, uh, your intro song, who is that yes. doing it and where did that come from? How did that come about? Um, so it kind of originally came from my outro, which I did myself. So that's uh -huh. me singing the outro. Um, but the intro, so I asked my buddy, who's kind of a magician, musician, um, and if he would do an intro for me. And he just kind of took that outro and made it the zone and it turned out great so <laughs> that's awesome so you have your very own like, yeah written intro yeah that is awesome and well, I that think... was my third question for you was mm -hmm. is that you doing the outro and yep. that is you okay yes yep all right <laughs> yep that's me <laughs> and your tagline how did that come about physical media will never die how did that come about uh, i don't know I just kind of came up with it and kind of tried to do like the the batman voice for the christian bale version and thought it kind of worked that's awesome when i first started watching yeah. your videos i was like oh that's great because i was i was just learning like what do most youtubers in this movie collective community do and you had uh -huh. like 
intro music, outro music, tagline. And I was like, I need to step up my game. I don't have any of that stuff. So, <laughs> Yeah, well, it takes time to progress and figure new things. And I've watched some of my old, older videos even. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest YouTuber now, but even you can kind of tell that I've kind of progressed at least a little bit. I've, I've watched, I've gone back to watch a little bit of my early videos and for me, it's super cringy. Like I have a hard time watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My own stuff. Yeah. Well, man, uh, thanks so much for doing this. So if you are first time watching this friends, it, we have five questions and you can answer the five questions with five films. And the reason I wanted to do these was just, I like talking movies. And so to talk movies with fellow um, collectors is awesome. Um, but then also we get to learn about YouTubers, some of the people in the movie collecting community. Um, I think these questions are very intentional to learn more about like, where did you come from with movies? Where are you currently at? What matters to you? And then what I selfishly, I get 25 film recommendations and, uh, which is kind of dangerous because my wish list is exploding doing these uh, conversations. <laughs> but, uh, anyone watching gets to get 25 film recommendations too. So, um, so yeah, so let's dive into the very first question. Uh, what five films have you been watching uh, most recently? Okay. So I got four here that I actually have the show and then one that I watched in the theater. All right. Um, so first up is, uh, Tom Selleck in the 1990 Quigley down under. <laughs> it was a very fun, fun movie. If you haven't seen it, um, I like Tom Selleck stuff. So um, this one's definitely worth checking out. Uh, the bad guy is Alan Rickman. Oh, uh, really? So he's really good in it too. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. It takes, so he's, you know, from the United States in the movie and he goes to Australia um, as like a marksman. And it's, it's just a fun movie. Definitely worth checking out. Any film that features his mustache is a great movie. So. <laughs> um, next up, I also have uh, The Untouchables. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this one. I haven't seen that, no. Okay, so this is the original to The Upside with Brian Cranston and um, Kevin Hart. Oh, really? So, so this is a foreign film. Um, so this came out in... 2011 and the, the the remake was 2017 um and this is like on the imdb probably at least top 100 maybe even closer to top 50 i think um and it's really good um especially if you don't mind reading subtitles i mean i was completely into it as soon as it started i mean it's based on a true story so it's really good and what language is it in uh, french i believe oh really I'll have to check that out. I'm writing my list down. Of your there films. we go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'll have to check that out. I didn't even realize that the Kevin Hart, Brian Cranston film was a remake. Yep. Yep. Cool. Um, and then, like you said earlier, I'm a big sports fan and I'm kind of a, a sucker for sports movies. So there's going to be some sports movies on these questions. <laughs> um, we recently watched uh, Wildcats as well Wildcats. with Goldie Hawn. Uh, this is an 80s movie, uh, 1986, um, star, stars Goldie Hawn, and um, she grew up with a father as a football coach, and she always loved football and wants to be a coach, and she finally gets that opportunity, um, and sh she coaches this, like, bad group of high school kids, um, but she kind of tries to bring them together and put together a winning team. Um, I think it was um, Woody Harrelson's very first film. Really? Um, Wesley Snipes is in it. Uh, young Wesley Snipes, uh, the guy that plays uh, Bubba and Forrest Gump. He's one of the main characters. And then the, they have some good other characters in it too, besides the students that you would recognize probably, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, there's a song at the end. that's kind of like a, a take on the, the Super Bowl shuffle that the Chicago Bears did. Um, and it's them kind of rapping. And uh, Goldie Hawn has a little part in it, and it's hilarious. <laughs> so you definitely need to watch it through the end credits if you want. I've never heard of that film, so I wrote that one down. I need to check that out for sure. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and then lastly that I have here that I've watched at home, is uh, Blinded by the Light. 
Um, this kind of came out at the same time as yesterday, which is like a, a Beatles inspired movie. Uh, this one is inspired by Bruce Springsteen music. Um, and the guy that he kind of wrote it, it's based on him. Um, I definitely recommend checking out the special features on it because um, they show the real guy. And I think they even do in the end credits of the movie. Uh, but the special features are really interesting. It's kind of musical-ish, but it's, uh, it was just a really good movie. I liked it quite a bit. Um, and I, it was one I was intrigued about, and, and I'd never really heard many people talk about it after it, it came out. Um, and I ended up getting it at Dollar General for like four ninety five, I think. Oh, wow. Um, so I thought that was worth it, and it ended up being worth it, so... Um, yeah, definitely recommend that one too, especially if you like Bruce Springsteen music because his music's throughout the movie and um, it's kind of inspiring as well. But okay, cool. Yeah, under by the lights. And what's the oh. uh, fifth one that you don't have with you? You're, you went to the theater. Okay. Yeah, Black Widow. Oh, how is it? it? It's good, especially if you like the Marvel movies. I, I had a lot of fun with it. I'm hoping to go see it this week with my brother-in-law. So it'll be my first time back to theater. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely worth watching in the theater. And I thought that the supporting cast is almost as enjoyable or if not even more enjoyable than uh, Scarlett Johansson's character even. That's what I heard, which is really impressive about the film that the supporting cast is that strong. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't tell me uh, anything. But is there end credit stuff afterwards? Yes, there is one end credits. All right. Scene. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was yep. curious if there would be. I haven't watched. Um, I guess some of it ties into the, the TV shows that they've been doing on Disney Plus, which I didn't really get the reference since I haven't watched those shows. But Okay. I think I've seen like two episodes of – all between all three of those shows. All right. So second question for you is what five films do you have your earliest memories from? Okay. Um, so these are just, they're kind of earliest memories, but also the ones I uh, have the, I guess, fondest memories of or whatnot. I mean, these ones definitely just came to mind. So, uh, and I have, this is my original VHS tape. Um, we got Davy Crockett, um, King of the Wild Frontier. So I don't know if you can kind of tell, but I've wore, and I was probably the only one ever watching this. And I just watched it a ton. And I had the, the hat like he had, and I had a little <laughs> outfit like that too, even uh, growing up. And I'd dress up like Davy Crockett and I just loved it. Um, I have the song on my my phone. Um, just love this movie. That's awesome. And watched it so much growing up. <laughs> <laughs> this one I, I remember too because um, um, I had most of my VHS tapes growing up were clamshells, Disney clamshells. I feel like that was the main ones my parents got me. I had a few that were my own, like non-Disney, but most of the non-Disney stuff we had was stuff we recorded from the TV. Um, but this one I got at a yard sale or garage sale from a neighbor. We got the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Um, and I watched this one a ton too. Um, and I love the turtles. Raphael's my favorite. <laughs> um, he's great in this movie. Um, it just has a lot of comedy and it's kind of dark for a, I comic bookish movie. Um, but it's just really good. Big fan of that one. My brother and I watched that one nonstop growing up. Oh yeah. It's, it's great. So good. Yeah. So a lot of mine are, um, stuff you've probably seen, but, um, I also got toy story on the list. Uh, um, I remember going to the theater to see this one. Um, at the time, my town didn't have a theater, so we had to go to a nearby town to watch it. Um, but then I got the clamshell and watched it a ton too. Um, just a great movie. It is. It's so good. And I love it that like my daughter even watches them now. And so it's fun that it's gone over that many generations. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're yep. just so good. They stand up. Yeah. 
and even the, yeah, the sequels too are oh, yeah. just as good. I mean, we went and watched the fourth one when we were in Orlando um, when that came out. And that was a fun experience too. But yeah, I've definitely fond memories of this one. Definitely. The third one wrecks me. I cry in the third one. <laughs> <laughs> we also got Three Ninjas. Have you seen Three Ninjas? I've never seen it. I've oh, Three it. Ninjas. I've never seen it. Um, I was big into karate, um, took karate classes and stuff. Um, and this is kind of like, it's a little bit like Karate Kid, but not really. More of like a, a kid's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Karate Kid, which I think it's, this says on the front, crosses Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Home Alone, which <laughs> it kind of does. Um, but uh, this one's more nostalgia than anything. It might not be as good as the other films. Um, but it still stands up for me and I have fun with it every time I watch it. It doesn't have a Blu-ray, I don't believe, which is a bummer, but um, they made three or four of these, I think, but the first one's the best with um, the original um, Rocky, Colt, and Tum Tum. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I've heard of that movie a million times. I've just I've never seen it. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, and then I also, this one I had a, a taped copy the original Batman. Oh, yeah. um, I watch this one so much, and it's probably my favorite. Though I do like the the Nolan ones too, but um, this was just always the Batman movie for me to watch. So love that. So good. Yeah, I uh, that one I do have on VHS. Um, I have it on VHS and mm -hmm. Blu-ray, and I love. Um, Jack Nicholson, when he says, uh, wait till they get a load of me, is my favorite line <laughs> for that film. It's a, it's a good one. Oh, so good. And the music's great. Everything about it's great. <laughs> it is. It was so well done. I, Heath is probably my favorite, but, um, but I love Jack in the role. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're both really good. Dang. Well, those are great picks, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so a young physical media man would have been wearing a Davy Crockett costume at karate class is that right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome breaking boards and bricks <laughs> i do i remember watching davy crockett like it is so good oh um, yeah i watched it at my grandmother's house i remember watching it there um because she had more channels than we did mm -hmm. and it's, it's just so good yeah all right so what five films for the third question what five films have had the greatest impact on you it could be emotionally, it could be it changed your worldview, impacted your life perspective, put you in someone else's shoes, or none of those things. Just what five films had the kind of the biggest impact on you? Okay, I had, I had some trouble with this, so um, I just kind of did, I just kind of based on that, what they were trying to say or um, that type of thing. Um, so first up, I got The Breakfast Club. Uh, this is the Criterion edition that I recently got, so I haven't watched it yet. Um, but I love this movie. I love anything John Hughes, really. Um, but just kind of the um, it's okay to be who you are type of thing, as well as um, it's you can get along with people that are not the same as you, um, was kind of what I would say. Um, but great movie. I've never seen it. I have the biggest. What? Yeah, I know, man. I'm a complete <laughs> failure. I just saw Jaws last week. So yeah, I know. saw that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, for me, '80s is like this black hole in of media for me. So okay. music and movies, like almost nothing. So I like the '20s, '30s, '40s, '50s, '60s a bit, '70s mm -hmm. is a little hit or miss. '80s is like a complete drop off. And then 90s on is full on. Okay, um, well, you got a lot of good stuff to catch up on there. <laughs> so I also got It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, um, so good. Just kind of, um, kind of like uh, maybe what your life is is already great and you just don't realize it type mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, maybe what you, you think the perfect life is really isn't that perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, it was a, it's a powerful movie. Um, and I, I only watched this for, I think I've only seen it once, honestly, and watched it for the first time a couple of years ago and just really, really liked it and the message it tells. 
Definitely. So you have you popped it in to check out the transfer yet on that 4K? Nope, it's still sealed. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't uh, watched it either. I just got okay. it. I can't wait to see the 4K transfer on it. Okay, yeah, because I think the Christmas time before I watched it, and then the next um, Black Friday it was on sale. Um, so I upgraded, and I just haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I'm super excited to watch the 4K version. Yeah. Um, next up, um, we got Rudy, which is also autographed by the real Rudy. Um, no way. My, yeah, my, my friend uh, Jake got this for me um, not too long ago. Um, so this is a prized item in my collection. I also, I was going to try to show, since I'm physically, media man and i collect all different formats um i also got the record here no way That's um awesome. and part of the reason i really like this movie is is the music it just kind of captures um the magic of notre dame um just a a magical place and the movie does just as good a job as the music of capturing it um it's one of the only films i think maybe newt rockney all american was somewhat filmed there um, but those are the only two that have been filmed on the Notre Dame campus. Oh, really? Um, so, um, and the same people that made Hoosiers made this, but um, based on a true story. Um, and it's just a, a powerful movie that he didn't have the greatest athletic ability and he wasn't the smartest person, but he ended up seeing the field at Notre Dame as well as graduating from Notre Dame. And it's just a, a great movie. And I try to watch it um, every football season, but I also play the music a lot. It was a, a, a cassette we used to play all the time on drives and um, yeah, just love Rudy. That's cool. That the artwork for that front cover is gorgeous. Oh, and uh, the, the, um, the actual record is gold, which is pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really cool attention to detail. Oh, yeah. So I had to get that when I saw it. Um, the last two are also sports films. <laughs> um, this one you might not have heard of or seen. Um, this could also be on another list of your questions. We got Breaking Away. I don't know if you're familiar with this. No. Um, so this is actually autographed by Dennis Christopher. Um, I met him at the Heartland International Film Festival a few years ago, but he's the star of the film. Um, it's based on a true story. So if you're not familiar with The Little 500, which is a, a race that's done at Indiana University every year um, around, it's the same week, I believe, but um, around the same time as the Indy 500. Um, so most of the teams are fraternities um, or sororities and they they do a bike race and it's like a, a team race um, but cutters are what the towny people of bloomington are called and this guy gets fascinated with i think it's like a french or some oh italian an italian biking team um, and he gets into the race and i don't want to spoil anything but um so they're like the underdogs and um and it's kind of like he wants to get out of a town so my kind of my thought on your question for this one is just um sometimes maybe the grass isn't as green on the other side maybe it's great where you're at already um or maybe you can do the thing that you want to do that you think you have to be somewhere else you can do it there or maybe it really is better to go somewhere else hmm. but don't forget where you come from um, that's cool yeah so it's a really powerful movie really good movie not enough people know about it um, i think it actually yeah it does have a blu-ray but it's a twilight time that's out of print and goes for crazy okay. money um but this is um oh um daniel stern's film debut um it has a young dennis quaid in it also has jackie earl haley in it 
Um, his parents, I think the dad is kind of famous. I didn't really recognize him, but he's really good in it too. And it's definitely worth checking out. Cool. Yeah. You say that one's called what is Breaking it? Away. Breaking Away. Yeah. And lastly, another sports movie. We got Rocky. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> can't go wrong with Rocky. So, um, so and good. that one, which is kind of a quote from a different movie, is like, um, just keep fighting, just keep moving forward, which I think is in maybe Rocky Balboa. Um, but this one is the one where he doesn't know, well, he thinks he can be a champion. Um, but this movie, he really finds out how good he is and just kind of betting on himself and trying the hardest he can. Um, so this one's my favorite. Love That's the music. Everything, love about them. It. everything about it's great. Have you seen the, uh, they're coming out with, um, <clears throat> Rocky for the director's cut. Oh no. Uh -uh. Yeah. It's supposed to be coming to theater into 4k. So you'll have okay. went and recut the film and it's obviously going to be put out in high def and 4k mm -hmm. and uh so i'm super excited to yeah see that'd be awesome ah, so good awesome man i'm very excited that a rocky film ended up in uh, one of these conversations <laughs> there we go I was we're not done with sports movies either so it's <laughs> <laughs> awesome well man those are great picks for uh, inspirational films well, for sure you. and sports films that's one of the things i love about sports films is they're oftentimes very impactful like with such like life lessons and yeah, a ton of meaning mm -hmm. to them. So what five films would you say are underrated? Okay. Um, and this one, I also only have four of them. I, ha I have the fifth, but I couldn't find it. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> um, uh, so first up, I'm going to show, we got another whoopee. We got the associate <laughs> and this is a Kino Lorber release. Are you familiar with this one? I have not seen it. I've seen the cover, but I've not watched the movie. Okay. Um, are you familiar with Remington Steel, the TV show with Pierce Brosnan? Uh, only by name. Okay. Well, this is somewhat similar in plot. Um, so, yeah, she's a, a businesswoman um, who basically does all the work for these other people, and they get the credit, and she gets into a spot where she actually gets to show what she's capable of and people don't realize it's her at the beginning. Um, then they kind of find out how awesome she really is. Um, there's, I think, uh, there's some other familiar faces in this one. Um, Diane Weist, Weist. Um, but anyways, the supporting cast is good too, but this is one of Whoopi's best that I've seen um, and definitely worth checking out. What year did that one come out in? Uh, 1996. 96, wow. Yeah. So. You say shit. Yeah, so I feel like this one doesn't get talked about enough either, and it, it was just a lot of fun. Cool. And Whoopi's really good in it. Uh, Nick of Time, which doesn't have a Blu-ray, uh, starring Johnny Depp and Christopher Walken. Um, haven't honestly seen this in a long time, but remembering it being so good. Um, and I feel like no one ever talks about it. So no Blu-ray came out in, um, 1995 and, uh, Johnny Depp plays, uh, an accountant and he's like in a train station with his daughter and all of a sudden a gun is put in his hand and his daughter is basically kidnapped and he has so much time to to, he's he's told that, that he needs to kill this political person within so much time or he'll never, never see his daughter again. Um, so it's a thriller, very good film, and it never really gets talked about. Christopher Walken's a really good bad guy in it. So I definitely recommend this one, even though I haven't seen it in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Walken's just like, it doesn't matter what he does. If he read the phone book to you, it'd be like incredibly interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, kind of recent, I think in the last year or two, I would just watch this one. It came out in 2019. Uh, we got Den of Thieves. Have you seen this one? No, I haven't seen that. 
Okay, so I'm I kind of like uh, the robbery uh, heist type of films, and uh, I feel like this one should be on a top ten list probably. Um, I really like it. It's got Gerard Butler, um, O'Shea Jackson Jr., and Fifty Cent in it. Um, but the other supporting characters are really good. Um, it's got some twists and turns that you're not sure what's going to happen or what's going on. Um, good payoff at the end. I thought the robbery scenes were really well done. Um, and it's got some similar scenes to like a heat or that type of thing that make it very believable. Um, so I would, I wouldn't say it's as good as heat or the town. Um, but it definitely deserves to be in that talk of good heist movies. Wow. I need to check that. I wrote that on my list too. I need to check that one out. Okay, there we I go. love Heat's one <laughs> yeah, of my all time favorite action movies. Okay. Um, this one is, it's not near as long. Well, it's two hours and 20 minutes, I guess. So it is kind of longer, but uh, when I watched it, it kind of seemed to float fly by. So um, yeah, I definitely recommend that. Cool. Um, the one I don't have is another sports movie. Um, Came out in 1994, starring Brendan Fraser and Albert Brooks, uh, The Scout. Have you seen this one? It's a baseball no. movie. No. Um, so I don't, it's been a while since I watched it. Um, it does have a Blu ray, but it's an Anchor Bay one that goes for like $90. Wow. Um, and I have the DVD, but I don't know where I put it. Um, but it's really good. Brennan Fraser's character's name is Steve Nebraska. <laughs> and he's like pitching in some, like not in the United States, he's pitching somewhere else and Albert Brooks finds him and he's a scout. Um, so he thinks it's going to be like his big break. And Brennan Fraser is really likable in the film. Um, music by Bill Conti, who did the music for Rocky. Um, and it's just a, a sports movie that doesn't get talked about near enough as it should. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Brendan Fraser in person and he's a really cool guy um, from my interaction with him. And um, I think that movie should get talked about a lot more than it does. Yeah. I've never even heard of that film. That's awesome. He, uh, I just read today, Brendan Fraser is going to be on in Scorsese's new film with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, that's going to be awesome then. So he's getting a huge rebirth of his career because it was kind of, he was kind of yeah. disappeared for a while, but to be back in Scorsese's new film with DiCaprio is pretty massive. Yeah, he deserves it. He's gone through some, some rough times and things that shouldn't have happened to him if you're not familiar with it. Um, and of course his injury um, and yeah. the mummy and that type of thing also kind of hurt, but um, it was more his career probably should have been better than what, I mean, it could still continue to on, but um, he probably should have got some more of the roles that he never got but is what it is, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty pumped to see what uh, he does in this Scorsese film. That's going to be, I think, incredible. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, we got Sing Street. Are you familiar with this one? It was on Netflix for a while and now it's really hard to find. I I know I haven't seen it, but have you in one of your videos in the past like talked about this one? I think so, actually. I, said, I think I heard about it from you. I've never seen okay. it. I'm pretty sure I heard you talk about it. Yeah, so it's about this uh, kid that's like, I think they're in like Britain or somewhere, England. And uh, he likes girls and um, tries to act like he's in a band, but then like actually forms a band. And that it the music's really good in it. It's got some Duran Duran and stuff. Um, so it's kind of like a coming of age story of him trying to figure out his life and what he, what his purpose is type of thing. But the music's really good. And um, it's just kind of original. Cool. What year is that film from? Um, it is from 2016. Oh, wow. So it's fairly current. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I think I ended up, I got lucky and bought it off somebody on Facebook marketplace, I think, because it goes for close to 20 bucks probably. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen it out either. Yeah. I don't, I'm not, I've never seen it out either. I just got lucky. That's awesome. I need to, but yeah, it used to be on Netflix and it got taken off of there. So 
So my last question for you is what five films bring you the most joy, hope, laughter, put a smile on your face? Yeah. What would you say your top five films it would be? Okay. Um, so first up, I'm going to start off with Indiana Jones, specifically the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. Um, watched this one a ton growing up. Um, just the adventure aspect and how much Harrison Ford and his character of Indiana Jones just you can tell how much he enjoys what he's doing plus the adventure of the film um i just always loved these movies we uh when you had mentioned taping stuff off the tv uh as kids that's that we had all three of those off the tv on just like old vhs tapes that we just constantly were watching over and over again yes that's great <laughs> <laughs> okay um all these are like my classic ones I watch all the time. So um, um, next up I'll do Jurassic Park, um, which I love so much. Um, was lucky enough to go to some of the filming um, locations in Hawaii. Um, and I think par- that part of the, I mean, the setting of the movie just makes it, kind of magical even though a lot of bad things happen and also just kind of the 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 characters reactions to seeing something that they either love or never thought that they would be able to see um and just kind of that wonder of things making things possible that you don't think are possible um but i love the music i love the characters I don't think there's a bad line in the movie. I've read the book, which might even be better, even though I love the movie so much. Um, <laughs> but I watched this so much growing up too. This was a, a watch a lot for me. I don't have that one in my collection. I've seen it, but I don't have it in the collection. And uh, we had a big lots open up in our town, like four minutes from my house. It opened today at noon. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went down and that was there for $5. Like the, 3d blu-ray okay three or four disc edition Mm -hmm. i I didn't end up picking it up but i was holding it going i really should own this and uh yeah yeah so i do need to fix that but i know where to find it now pretty yeah i also really like the vehicles and the the color schemes that they use for everything and how realistic the dinosaurs look um even the computer generated sections of the film um and you can just tell everyone involved just really wanted to make this a great movie. Absolutely. It is such a huge classic. Oh yeah. Uh, next I got, um, the mighty ducks, <laughs> um, which is another sports film. Um, but I love these movies so much. I don't know if you can tell, I got the second one right there with a replica or remade like, puck from the second movie um the first two especially especially i love and i probably honestly watched the second one more but i'm saying the first one um just because of that was the original and the characters are so great in it but um i just love watching these movies and um the the hockey in the second film is really well done i feel like uh, never played hockey, but um, always just love these movies and the feeling of kind of flying, even if it's comparable to other sports, you kind of still have that running fast and flying feeling that you get in hockey. Um, and I also really like the characters and everything, but these That's movies cool. are great. Did you watch the, uh, does, uh, does Disney Plus, they have a, a show, yeah. on, right? Uh-huh. Game Is it Changers. Good? Is it good? Uh, I like the movies so much and, and everything that I, I had fun with the show. Um, it's not near as good as the movies, but it's still a lot of fun. And if you like the movies, you probably like the show. That's awesome. Yeah. I think some, I might've seen the first film. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, the second one's just as good, if not better. And even the third one, um, especially if it was a standalone film, and probably be better well received um, but Gordon Bombay's hardly in it um, and I recently rewatched it 
Um, it's more of a mature tone and I mean, they're older, so it kind of makes sense. Um, but I still liked it. It's not as good as the first two, but still likable. <laughs> nice. Um, and I got another sports movie. <laughs> we got the Sandlot. Um, nostalgia for this one. Love this movie. Didn't really grow up playing baseball. Love baseball, but, um, but it still reminds me of childhood and riding bikes and going to the pool and just being with friends and just a great movie. <laughs> Those movies that take you back to like your childhood are the best. Like oh, yeah. if you can get lost for hour 30, two hours, that's the best. Those kinds of movies. Yeah. And the characters are great in this one too. It never gets old. Lines never get old. Um, <laughs> I could watch this every day probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. All right. And lastly, I got probably my favorite movie ever. We got Home Alone. Ah, uh, so good. And it just brings me joy. It reminds me of Christmas, obviously. And I think it just does a great job. Of, even though a lot of the movie, it's just him. It still does a great job of capturing the Christmas spirit and everything that goes into Christmas, which is my favorite holiday. Um, also, I love the house and the wet bandits and <laughs> the music. John Williams music in this film is amazing. Um, and it's just such a good movie. It was one of those ones when it came out, you knew like, we're going to watch this every year for the rest of our lives. Like, mm -hmm. and same with Elf when it came out with these newer movies, you're like, we're going to watch this one forever. Yeah. Um, you know, some other ones, they come and go, or you might watch it every five, 10 years, but mm -hmm. that Elf, you just like, it's going to be every year. Yeah. When I was watching your uh, video with Mr. Nichols, Mr. Nichols. I was afraid he was going to say this when he was talking about a Christmas movie and it luckily ended up being Christmas vacation instead. Right. So <laughs> got lucky there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. It's, I, I, I'm, it's funny doing these conversations. I'm, there's so many movies out there and people's tastes are so diverse and their backgrounds are so diverse, how we grew up that it's fascinating to me that there can be such a diversity in the movies we're selecting, you know, mm -hmm. you would think there'd be more crossover, but there, there's just so many out there and we yeah. just all grew up in such different times and places that, yeah. So that's been really that's fun true. too, to watch yeah. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, Mr. Nichols did not mention that one. So <laughs> yeah, I got lucky. <laughs> uh, he, uh, if I can remember, which I know fly away home, I kind of thought about that. He yeah. mentioned that one's very good. And there was one or two other ones that I kind of thought about putting on, putting on my list, but I know fly away home was one of the ones I remember watching early on, but went with other ones instead. But. Now, where do you stand on the other home alone films? Um, I really like the second one. Okay. Um, I also like the third one. Okay. I know a lot of people don't like it, um, but I really enjoy it. And I recently rewatched it. If you don't, it's hard to do, but if you don't really think about the other two, it's kind of a, a fun film though. I don't think it captures the Christmas spirit as well as the other ones. Okay. Cause it, I think technically takes place after Christmas, but um, it's still a good movie. I think, or I like it, like to watch it. I watched that one. That was one of the ones I had the actual VHS of growing up. So I watched it a lot. That's awesome. <laughs> what do you have coming up on your channel? I know recently you've put up a couple of videos, DVDs you're selling. Mm -hmm. um, next week, um, I have um, some movie reviews that I've really been slacking on. So it's like multiple months worth um, <laughs> that I still need. I got probably two or three videos left worth of that. Wow. that I haven't done yet. Um, and then I'm hopefully going to do another movie room tour soon. And then we have some football um, trips where we'll be going out of state for um, coming up for football season that I'll hopefully do some vlog videos for. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll do some different things, um, maybe some top 10 lists or um, actor spotlights and less of just my pickups because I've kind of trimmed that back a little bit than usual. 
But though there's, there'll still be some of those for sure. <laughs> I like the videos you did recently. Well, I guess a couple months ago now, uh, when you met up with Joe and Marie and uh, other YouTubers and did a little hunting, those were really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch those. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that, that was really neat and cool to do. They were so awesome and had such a fun time doing that. And it was really awesome to Lewis and X team to welcome us into their home and uh, take us out in the area. So that, that was a blast. Now, was that the first time you'd met all of those people in person? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That is awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was really neat. That's wild. I haven't, um, I've almost met a couple of uh, fellow collectors in my area in the Northeast mm -hmm. um, because uh, the video game movie dome is uh, maybe hour, two hours and a little less than three hours away from me. And so it's mm -hmm. central for a few people around here. Um, so I've had a couple of almost connections with some other fellow YouTubers, but uh, yeah. I haven't had the privilege yet. So <laughs> I met at least one around me but there aren't n near as many so um but that was a fun trip because i had like a five hour drive or so oh wow uh, yeah but it was it was worth it we had a blast so <laughs> well man thanks for doing this i really do appreciate it and uh, it always it's really interesting to me to hear uh, as i mentioned all the different film recommendations and uh where people came from and uh so yeah i appreciate you doing this Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me on. I definitely appreciate it. It was definitely a lot of fun to do. Cool. Well, I'm going to have um, all your links below for Instagram and YouTube. Um, so, uh, so for folks, if you're watching this, make sure you check out Physical Media Man. He's got tons of great content all the time and um, on both of those uh, platforms. So definitely worth checking out. Yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Thank do you, you want to, will you close us off with your tagline by any chance? Or is that only for no. your channel? No, of course I will. Yes. <laughs> All right. Physical media will never die. <laughs> Finally, my channel has a good tagline on it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Cool, man. Thanks so much, man. I really do appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. All right. Have a good rest of the week. Thanks. You too. All right. Bye -bye. All right. See you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I got the tagline at the end of this video, which is awesome. Thank you very much, Physical Media Man, for doing that. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this conversation, friends. I'm really excited about the series. This series will continue. I've already got, I want to say, six more people lined up to have these kind of conversations. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, to hear more about uh, their film collectors and what their passions are, more film recommendations. So anyway, if you did like this video, go ahead and hit like uh, if you'd like to. And if you want to subscribe for more of this kind of content, that'd be great too. Friends, thanks so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. We've got more content coming very soon. Please do take care of yourself. We'll see you next time.